Hello and welcome back to the channel. Have you ever got scans back from the lab and wondered why they look differently from the last time you got them? Or maybe you've had things come through that don't quite match the way that you remember the film being. Well, today I'm gonna to be talking all about this because I'm gonna be discussing what happens to your negatives when they are scanned in a lab and why or why not you might want some editing done to them afterwards. My name is Paul Mackay, I'm from Analog Wonderland, and we're gonna spend a little bit of time getting really into negative scanning. So when you send your films off to a lab and you've requested scans back, what really happens to them? The first step is developing. And if it's in color developing, it goes through the color chemistry and black and white obviously goes through black and white. When the negatives have been processed, you have the negative strips and that will reflect the shot that you've taken, but in negative form. Now there's a very famous photographer who said that the negative is like a manuscript, the print is like the final performance of a musical piece. And of course in today's world, that is still true, but we also now have scans that could also be the final performance. And there's a lot that goes into turning negatives into the scans that you will see and download on your computer or phone and understanding exactly what those differences can be depending on what the labs choose to do or what you choose to do is really, really important in getting back photographs that you think are reflective of what you had in your head when you took that photo. So the first step when you get the negatives back is to clean them. And this is to clean them of dust, hair, maybe some watermarks, some imperfections that have come through the analog process. Now, of course, a large part of the job of any good lab is to minimize the dust, the hair, the marks, everything that can go onto your film but it's impossible to get rid of all of them. The sensible precautions are using gloves. So we have white cotton gloves for all our lab technicians, for example, handling any film, exposed, unexposed, developed, non-developed, it doesn't matter, making sure that no chemicals or sweat or anything from your fingers get onto a negative. We also make sure that, for example, you, know, you don't have open doors, you don't have things being carried around, you don't have food in the lab. All of these quite basic things to make sure that as few airborne particles as possible are available but ultimately dust is part of life uh, it's impossible to get rid of all dust unless you had one of those like um, forensic labs with airlocks and change of clothes and everything which would be very expensive and a bit difficult for shifts but yeah so you have certain things and of course the number one job of the lab is to minimize that and when the number two job is that when there is something it's cleaned appropriately with the right equipment so either a fine hair brush or ideally air blowers we have motorized air brush air blowers as well which are really good fun to get rid of as much of that as possible and then they go through the film scanners these are fantastic bits of kit we have fujifilm frontiers and they are absolutely brilliant they were the height the pinnacle of technology 20 years ago and what they do is they do a very quick run through so they can assess you know, where the frames are and what kind of film it is. Then they'll go back and do a detailed scan, depending on what you chose as your scanning resolution. Bigger scans take a lot longer, which is why they're more expensive. They just take up more time and energy and everything because the scanner is going slower, making sure that they've got as much information out of that negative as possible. If it's color film, it then goes through again. And this is a process called digital ice where the scanner will go through the final time on a different wavelength of light that sees through all of the film but will get blocked by physical particles, dust, hair, etc. So it can then, using software, automatically remove a large part of the artifacts itself. That isn't possible with black and white, which is why black and white scans and editing packages are often a bit more expensive because there is more physical things that need to be removed afterwards rather than automatically. And the other thing that these scanners do brilliantly is that you can affect certain aspects of the photo as it goes through the scan. And this is why your lab technicians matter. So if you've had scans back from a high street chain, dare I say, not all of them, but some of them who might have inexperienced lab technicians or without the proper quality control, the scan quality will be worse because it requires somebody who understands how to adjust curves, how to tweak contrast, etc., etc., to give you the best possible in scanner settings that then gives you the, the image that comes out at the other end. There are, however, serious limitations around this software and that's because of it was the best it could be 20 years ago. We're not 20 years ago anymore, especially not when it comes to digital imaging technology. So depending on the software, it may not be able to rotate. It may not be able to crop properly. In fact, that's generally true regardless of software. So if the scanners misread the line slightly, you'll get this 
black line at the starter end of a frame that you'll have to then go through and crop out afterwards. And it also the, the curves and all of the in-scanner settings that you can affect are also relatively limited. Even the best technician in the world would struggle to get the perfect scan out of an in-scanner. Now, I'm sure there will be people on the internet who disagree with me on that. Um, I'm basing it on all the knowledge we have from our technicians in the community out there, and intuitively it makes sense. The best scans won't come from 20-year-old software. I think that's uh, probably actually not too crazy a thing to say. But what you get out of there is you'll get a decent scan, particularly if the lab technician is good, you'll get a, a very good scan, but it may not be rotated, it may not be cropped, and it may not have all of the artifacts removed. It also may not be perfectly consistent across the frame or across film to film, because again, there are limitations in how it can do that. It is done frame by frame. You can't mass apply an effect across the entire frame at once, for example, anything like that. But it'll be pretty good. And that is what a lot of you will be used to getting back from labs. In my opinion, uh, and in the view of many film photographers, that is still not at the level that you would put out to publish on websites or you would necessarily print on a wall. You would always then go through a post-processing process, <laughs> a post-processing, I don't know, system with Photoshop or a similar piece of software that would optimize the image. First of all, to make sure that it reflects what you wanted it to show and also making sure that it's consistent with the film that you used. The in-scanner settings, especially without somebody who understands what a film should look like, can also often correct out or correct in colors, shadows, elements that shouldn't really exist there. So you're really looking for a lab and a technician who knows what Portrait 400 looks like versus Portrait 800. Knows that with Revlog or Double Film, you're gonna get the effects and it should be about this level. So don't try and up the saturation to make the whole photo uh, crazy colors, but also not try and remove it, which will neutralize and flatten the whole image. You're looking for something that comes out as your vision was, and as reflects the film. Now, of course, that doesn't make a perfect photo. I've taken lots of photos that, uh, at the end of the day, the scans were exactly what I pointed my camera at and on the film, but it just wasn't very well composed or focused. So it can't fix everything, but it definitely gets you to that, that perfect point of saying, yes, that is what I took a photo of. Brilliant. That is what I wanted it to look like. And for us, that's our standard editing package. Now, we actually offer ones either side of that. So basic, is if you're very comfortable with doing your own post, you may have your own opinions about how your photo should look like, in which case we'll do the cropping and rotating. Of course we will, so it's ready to go. We don't want you sat at home doing things that are <laughs> frankly just dull. But the color correction and dust removal will be up to you then to do exactly what you want across the entire roll. If you're super comfortable with that element of it and if you enjoy doing it, personally I don't, but I know lots of people who do, then you can save a couple of quid by saying, don't worry, I'll do that at home. Happy days, basic editing is fine. Now on the other side you have the bespoke editing. Now this is a really uh, out there level but the editors that we have in the lab are uh, absolute wizards in Lightroom and Photoshop and everything. And we've had cases where negatives have ripped in camera across a frame. We've developed them separately, scanned them separately and then they have been intricately stitched back to create the original frame, they're able to do retouching, they're able to do colorization, they're able to do a load of stuff and the bespoke package allows you to request those really out there things that will take a lot of time but we have professional editors who are able to do it who still ultimately come from a film photography background and understand what film is versus a digital graphic and will be able to do that work. There's also allows some back and forth if you're not, if you're not you know, happy first time. Frankly it's a very niche service and I don't expect many of you to ever have to use it. Um, but it's, it's nice to know it's there, I think, and also it goes to show like the most impressive things I've seen our editors do are the ones where they've had a challenge like that. But for most people, that standard package is perfect. And the idea of the standard package is you get it back, you go, yes, that's my photo. You don't need to spend loads of time on Photoshop or, or, or editing it afterwards. You can put it on Instagram, you can put it on a website, or you can print it straight away, totally happy. Lots of people have lots of questions frequently with us, the myths and misconceptions about how we choose scanning, what's the difference, does it matter which lab goes in or does it matter which machine or which technician? Yes, ultimately it does, that's why it's so important, that's why we and a lot of other really good labs spend so much time making sure that our technicians are trained, that have the right knowledge about film, that understand exactly what is reflecting the photographer's vision versus trying to impose something on top of what they expect it to be. It's been processed, it's been cleaned, it goes through those scanners and gets an initial in-scanner settings to make it look 
mostly there. And then the post-processing, the editing we do in-house gets it all the way there. And after that, they're sent to you via your customer account, natives packed up and sent back to you as well. And it's there, it's done. There we go, that's how your photos go from negative to digital file. If you have any questions, please do drop them below or get in touch with us. I hope this has helped demystify it slightly and I'll see you again soon.